waited too long on the X-Men, right? And I think, yes, they're probably saving them for a moment in a grand reveal and, like, introduce them, like, whatever. But you could have come in strong and literally just gave us another Wolverine yeah. and made Wolverine the leader of the uh, Avengers. And everyone would be like, okay, I'm here for it. Like, doesn't matter because Wolverine is a character. Like, I want to say it's, like, right now it's probably Spider-Man, like, Wolverine, Iron Man, Thor. Like, those are probably your top, like, yeah, I could superheroes. And the only one that hasn't been used or utilized is Wolverine. And, like, whatever it is about, yes, I understand the concern of a new Wolverine. And maybe they don't have the person that they feel like can subside or take over the Hugh Jackman role. And, yes, we're still, the next Wolverine that we're getting is still Hugh Jackman. So it yeah. seems like they're having a hard time letting go there. But I think is if you do it properly, there's a way that you can make the Avengers movies fun again and stop going off with these like B characters on this B like Avengers story. Cause it's like, there's no one in the current Avengers lineup that I feel like is a leader or like could carry the Avengers films on their own. Like we don't, like we have Shiri as Black Panther right now. You know, we have uh, Sam Wilson as Captain America. Like yeah. we, have a bunch of like substitutes right instead of having someone like we could have someone come in and be like let's pull this ragtag team together yeah and i think that requires the deadpool or that requires a wolverine or even i would say even a more like grown-up peter parker to some that extent. would be interesting yeah uh reed richards would be interesting right. So I think there's there's many ways to go about that. It's just they're not quite, they're not, the conviction isn't there for yeah. them to actually want to go for it. And that's where I get concerned in the leading up to all of this because now no one can make a decision. So we don't know what's going to happen. And we just end up with all these like B storylines and whatever. But the last thing that this article details is the VFX artist, Yumi Naizen. Yeah. And this is a part where it can be very expensive for these movies to be made. And then that's going to cause lackluster visuals like we saw with Ant-Man 3. And I'm not sure how that's going to affect the entire budgets of things because these budgets are already massive, like $250 million per movie at this point. So it's like if your budget goes up and then people aren't going to see the movie, it can be a massive <laughs> issue for marvel so i think that out of everything else that we've talked about is probably going to be the biggest thorn in their foot which i didn't quite understand and i'm totally for visual effects artists unionizing because mm -hmm. i think across the industry they have run into issues i think it was the life of pi that won academy awards but then the studio uh, the vf the video effects studio had to fold even before it won because of money issues and mm -hmm. just overtaxing the employees um, but what i didn't understand about that is like you guys bought Lucasfilm. Right. Which with that came one of the greatest visual effects studios ever. And you really never heard of complaints when Lucasfilm was doing special effects with these artists. So what the hell did you do, Disney, that caused the problems? I think like ILM yeah. is like the big like people like they're doing water sims for avatar they're mm -hmm. doing like all these crazy things and they're breaking technology down and i think these massive studios like ilm are forced to take on like everyone wants them to do this vfx but they don't have a big enough roster or their system's not unionized enough for that company to be able to handle the infrastructure because if you want to do avatar type water you have to go to ilm yes. so these studios are not these visual effects houses are bidding for these contracts and you look at it from the marvel standpoint it's like i'm going to pick the best bid but that may not be the vfx house that can give you the results that you need for this movie to actually succeed and i think that is the issue that we're going to see play out a lot of the time because the budget's always going to be the reason why we don't get the best vfx or we don't have the right studio working on this project to give us these realistic um, 
characters that we need to like you have the wrong person doing rubbery stuff for uh fantastic four and it's gonna look bad and then people are gonna never want to see a fantastic four movie ever again well i think that's where we run into the issues ant-man is a great example they moved that film up four months yeah and it's like it wasn't ready no and i think that's another issue is it not necessarily the budget but they're trying to rush these films Mm -hmm. out uh on the flip side was the flash they had years to do that mm-hmm. and they some reason didn't get the visual effects right so the baby I don't, shower will haunt me forever <laughs> so i don't know what that answer is i am glad they're unionizing because they need a bigger voice mm-hmm. and they need more negotiating power but i really think again it goes back to the executives it's like dude not every film has to be a billion dollars right you have outlets this is what frustrates me with disney you now have massive outlets to show these films and keep them alive for a long period of time. Yeah. Whereas growing up in the 80s, it was in the theater. And then who knows you would need to see it again. Right. Oh, good. We have VHS now. But, oh, now we have cable so we can watch it. Mm. Now it's on demand. You can watch it whenever. So like right. Brandon had been talking about Haunted Mansion being released in uh, time for Halloween on Disney+. Plus. Cool. Works perfect. And Anna Jones was a failure at the box office. But we get to see it on Disney+. Mm. Plus. That's part and of the business. I think COVID made a change to this market that no one's willing to actually say happened is like if the movie's not top of your priority it costs a hundred dollars to take your family of five to the movies and that's out of people's budget when you can wait three months and your 15 Mm dollars subscription can provide that same entertainment for your family you can stay at home eat your popcorn have a nice movie be safe be safe and all that kind of stuff and it's one of those things where it's like these Studios have to realize that they caused the problem yeah. by leaning so hard into these streaming platforms and having these massive budgets. Like your HBO and Apple are not slowing down. Your uh, Amazon, like they have and infinite not, budgets. To Apple do that. and Amazon aren't relying on content. Right, their money comes elsewhere, so they can make whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. So Disney either needs to open a drop shipping company. <laughs> and gets yes. gets another revenue stream so they can dump money into this passion project or really sit and understand that you created this issue. You can either lean into it or skip the box office entirely because I'm sure that in itself, yes, you are losing that. But even what they tested with Black Widow with people buying it yeah. on that, I would be okay with that model too because then I'm still – paying the $30 to watch the movie that I am doing, but I don't have to go and like worry about being out. I can watch it when I want to watch it. And I, whatever it fits into my schedule. And we're at a time where it's like economically hard for people. Yeah. Yeah. And entertainment does thrive during these times. And that has been proven in the great depression and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think going to the movies is going to be a thing 15 years from now. I think it'll be like going to see a live stage production Yeah, that you're going to want to go see your Marvels, your Star Wars, these things that you can only experience in the theater on a huge screen and be blown away. Like Not that you things have like to. Fear. Like yes, exactly. Like an experience. Like exactly. So it'll be an experience is a great way to put it. Mm-hmm. But I agree. I think um, with the technology, with televisions at home, sound systems, entertainment, all that stuff, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't quite understand the decision on this, but recently Five Nights at Five Nights at Freddy's came out yeah. and it did great at the box office. Mm-hmm. I just happened to be on Peacock and saw it was already out on Peacock. And this is their second weekend. And I'm like, who made oh, this decision? This is weird. And the box office, of because course. It went straight to the yeah, I was like, I don't understand mm-hmm. these decisions that are being made. And then they get mad at the box office and they didn't make enough money. Right. And it's strange to me. Yeah. I also think movie theaters need to pivot their business model in some way, shape, or form to also like realize that like these ten pole movies are probably not going to allow them to sustain themselves over the next ten years. And stop forcing it. Like we see Harry Potter yeah. trying to come up with more and more. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's not movie, but Game of Thrones. Like stop trying to force these things that worked in the past to current day. Right. And the reason why Game of Thrones worked or like some of these like other projects worked is because they were new at the time. Yeah. Right. Like to do another Lord of the Rings doesn't make sense because like we read The Hobbit. We read The Lord of the Rings. Like we read these books front to back. Like we got what we wanted out of them. You already milked them for four more Hobbit movies. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason to continue down that path unless you're just 
truly that passionate about it and you're not mad at the box office or the sales or whatever like if you're just trying to fill in the story then that's cool yeah. like we love that and like the people that are really interested about that will enjoy that but when you continue to do that and build out these worlds then you lose the everyday people that like just watching game of thrones with their friends on sunday nights and gave them something to do now i have to watch house of dragons house of stark or whatever all of these things that they're going to build out and now it's not the same story because i have to watch 900 hours to even enjoy game of thrones and that is going back to our marvel discussion right how old were you when iron man came out what was it 2001 2008 i think 2008 i would have been 18 so as an 18 year old theoretically you may have had other things going on that you didn't go to the theater to see it mm -hmm. or like my kids, Madison wasn't even born yet. Right. So now she's expected to go see the Marvels this weekend, and right. maybe something happened earlier on. Right. And she's going to have no clue that it was something related to the Marvels. Right. So like you're saying, you have to be uber nerd to catch all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's not going to happen. So maybe we do need more standalone things that don't necessarily tie back into right. everything that's happening. And I think one thing that DC is doing that is going to be really powerful for them is the standalone Batman stories, yeah. the standalone Joker stories. Like yeah. those are going to dominate because they are self-contained and it's maybe two or three movies long. And that's like all you need. Like Christopher Nolan proved that you can oh, write yeah. a crazy story in three movies. Yep. And I think that, we just need to do some self-assessing as the movie industry and 